All right, let's go over the Flowblade video editor. So now, for those of you who are not familiar, Flowblade is a free and open source video editing program for Linux. I believe it's available on Debian and every Debian-based distro, and I think it's available on other Linux distros as well. Now, Flowblade, like any advanced video editor, I find has a very steep learning curve. So this video is to help you get over that learning curve by showing you, like, the basics of the program. I'm not going over every feature in Flowblade, just the ones that I personally use and that I think most YouTubers will need. Because this program is so advanced that it just has way too many features to mention in this video. Like, I don't think I even use, like, half of the program's features. But with that being said, let's get right into this. Alright, so now this is the interface of Flowblade. Now, of course, to start our project, we actually need to add a video to edit. To do that, just go up to Project, Add Video Audio or Image, and then select the file that you want. In my case, I'm going to be working with my Ubuntu version history video, which was my previous video. I encourage you to go check that out. I'll look it up in the card. But anyway, once you got your video file selected, you can just click open, and then your video file will be right there. Then you simply have to drag it into the timeline right here. This is called a timeline. Just drag it onto the V1 clip. And there we go. Now if we zoom out here, we can see our full clip here. And of course, you can add multiple clips here and into the timeline. If you wanted to add in another clip, you just drag and drop another clip here, and there you go. So now let's actually zoom in so that way this is easier to work with. I like to zoom up to three seconds per marker. But anyway, if you want to cut off a chunk of the video, say it was a boring moment of silence, you just find where you want to cut, right about there. And you could click the blade button, but there's a shortcut. Just put this marker where you want to cut, and then hit the X key. There we go. Then you just click on the part of the video that you want to cut out. I'd actually scroll all the way to the beginning of that clip. And then, of course, you can hit the splice out button. But here's another shortcut. Just select the part of the video that you want to cut out, then click delete. And then you can drag the marker to the beginning of the video that's still there. In fact, I find using these keyboard shortcuts is so much faster. I very rarely, if ever, use these buttons for video editing. Now, if you wanted to undo what you just did, say a cut or splice out, you could click the undo button, but I'm going to tell you another shortcut. Just press Control Z. That means press and hold the control key while you press and release Z. And then if you want to redo what you just did, of course you can hit the redo button, but here's another shortcut. Just press Control Y. Again, that's press and hold the control button while you press and release Y. Now, if you wanted to speed up a certain section of the video, say there was a really long loading screen, you'd still blade it as if you were going to cut out that part, but then instead of splicing it out, you're going to right click on the clip that you want to speed up, then go to export to tool, then slow slash fast motion. Then we can speed this up however much we want. My tradition with this channel is eight seconds. Don't ask me why. It's just my tradition with this channel. And we can only do up to 2900% or 29 times because that's the limit that it gives us. But you can just render this sped up file at the maximum speed up percentage. And then you can just speed up that sped up clip. But anyway, once you're done with that, you can of course change the name of this and then you can click render. All right, and then once it's done rendering your sped up clip, you can just delete that raw clip, the one that's not sped up, and then put in your sped up clip, and then you will want to right click on it, then go to mute, and then click mute audio. And there we go. And now you have a sped up clip. Now if you want to speed up your clip more than what Flowblade will allow, you just render your sped up clip at the limit, but then instead of putting it in your timeline, you just right click on it, then click render slow slash fast motion file, and then you can speed this up even more. Now if you want to add a fade in and a fade out to your video, you just click on the clip that you want to add the fade into, then click this button, and then I like to make my like 15 frames, and then you have to change your encoding to MPEG-4, then click apply. Alright. And there we go, now I have a fade in. And then you can just do the same thing with a fade out. Click on the clip that you want to add the fade out to, then click this, and then instead of doing fade in, you do fade out. Same principle, change the encoding to MPEG-4, length is 15 frames, then click apply. And there you go, now you have a fade out in your video. So now, if you want to cross fade two clips, 
you want to figure out how many frames you want your crossfade to be. I like to do 15 frames, and then you'll need to divide that by two. And if you get a decimal number, just round it up to the nearest whole number. And then if you haven't done so already, you'll need to cut off at least that number of frames from the appropriate ends of both clips. So I want my crossfade to be 15 frames. So 15 divided by two equals 7.5, which I can't use since it's a decimal number. So I'm gonna round that up to eight. And then you wanna click on the end of the clip, you know, where you see that little symbol. Then I want to cut off 8 frames. Then once you got the appropriate amount of frames cut off, just release the mouse button, then it'll cut your video. Now you also want to make sure that you have at least that number of frames with no audio at the end. In my case, I want to have at least 8 frames of video with no audio at, at the appropriate ends of my clips because this program will cut off 8 frames of your audio and that's after you do your cuts if necessary from the end of the first clip. And besides, it just looks better if you're not talking during the crossfade. But anyway, if that's not possible, fret not, you can simply click on the clip where this is not possible, then click split audio. Now, I've already cut a lot more than eight frames off of the end of this clip, so then we can just control click them both. That is, press and hold the control button while you click on both these clips, then click on this button here, and then I said I want my length to be 15 frames, and by default, the crossfade type is dissolve. By the way, Flowblade calls crossfades transitions. You can play with these on your own time. Dissolve is the one I use most often, but I mean, we can just make sure that our encoding is MPEG-4, then click apply. There we go. And in case you ever need to mute the audio in your crossfade, just make sure that you go up to the crossfade with this icon. Make sure that that doesn't change. Then right click, then go to mute, then mute audio. And there you go. Now I have a crossfade. So now, if you want to change the volume on a clip, say it's too quiet for some reason, just right click on the clip that you want to change the volume for, then go to add filter, audio, volume, then there we go. So now if you want to increase the volume, you can just turn it up right here, and you can also turn it down right here. 100 is the one that it is on by default. I like to call that the neutral setting. Below 100 turns it down, above 100 turns it up, and you can turn it up to 200, or even all the way down to zero. But anyway, let's turn it up to 200. All right. Today we're taking a trip down. Now that's even louder. And if you wanted to incrementally turn up the volume as it's approaching the end of the clip, you can just go to the end of the clip and then turn it up there. Or if you want to do the opposite and you want to turn it down incrementally, just turn it down from there. Now it'll be 100 at the beginning of the clip, but as you go down the clip, it'll gradually turn itself up, depending on how long your clip is. And of course you can add keyframes at intervals. So let's say you want to turn up the volume at around halfway. We can just go there, add a keyframe right there, then we can turn up the volume. And then make sure it's at that point at the end. There we go. And then you can play with that on your own. And then it'll incrementally turn it up as you get closer to that keyframe. And you can of course move that keyframe around. And then if you want to remove a keyframe, just click on it, hit the minus button, there you go. But anyway, if you want to get rid of that volume filter, you can right click on it and then click like clear filters, or you can just go to that clip's filters editor. If it's not already open in the filters editor, just right click on it and then click open in filters editor. This symbol will show if it's open in the filters editor and this symbol shows if it has any filters. And then what you can do is just delete the volume filter by clicking on it then clicking delete right there. And of course you can follow the ladder procedure to edit your volume filter as well. So now if you wanna add a video in a video or you wanna add a photo in a video, you of course have your main video right here and then you'd add the video that you wanna add in to your main video to V2 like that. And then you'll of course wanna delete the spacer. And then you'll wanna right click on your secondary clip, then click add compositor a fine blend. And then you want to set your zoom to 100%. And now we're going to go up to our picture and picture settings. Then just press and hold the shift key while you press and release the left arrow key to shrink it and the right arrow key to enlarge it. Then you do that to shrink it down to whatever you want. I think that works fine. And then put it wherever you want with your mouse. And of course you can use the arrow keys to move it little by little. And then you just do that and so you got it right where you want it. I think that works fine for me. So then we can just get out of this and there we go. And then if you wanted to shrink and expand this as the video goes along, it's pretty much the same principle as the volume filter. You can just adjust this 
at the end of the clip and add keyframes wherever you want. Now, if you want to edit them in sync, so you're capturing camera footage and screen recording footage, you want to make sure that they're in sync and you will probably want to mute one of them. But anyway, if you want to delete a compositor, just click on it, then click delete. Now, if you wanted to add text in your video, we actually want to use a program called GIMP, which I'll cover in depth in my next video. But for now, let's go up to the file menu, new to advanced options, and then under fill with, you're going to want to change that to transparency, then click OK. And then you can write whatever you want right here. And then you can make this bigger, or smaller, however you want. Just make sure that the viewers will be able to see it. And then you can use the move tool to drag it around. By the way, the text tool is in tools, text, and the move tools in tools, transform tools, move. I'd imagine this this checkered background as your video. So move the text where in your video you want the text to appear. So let's say I want it like around in the middle. I'll just put it right there. And then once you're ready to put it into your video, just go to file, export, and then put this in your project directory. Call it pretty much whatever you want. I'm gonna call it text.png. But anyway, you're gonna wanna go to select file type by extension, and then make sure this is set to PNG, because we need to set it to PNG to hold the transparency information. Then just click export. And you may wanna save this first, but anyway, once you've got your text ready, just go to Project, Add Video, Audio, or Image. Then let's just do text.png, then find where you want to add it in. I want to add it into the beginning, so I'm going to put it under V2, then delete my spacer. Then right-click on your text image file, then go to Add Compositor, Blend. Then your text should show up right there. And then you can add or remove the length of your text image however much you like. And then you also want to make the compositor the same length as your text image. To do that, just make sure that this icon shows up by putting your mouse at the end of the compositor. Then drag that like you would a video file. And then it should snap to your text image. Then just release it, and there we go. And then if you want to save this project to make more edits later, just go to File, Save, and then call whatever you want. I'm going to call mine project.flb, and then save it in your project folder. Let's just click save, and then you should see your project.flb file, and then you'll need to hit cancel to get out of this. Now, when you go to close Flowblade, it'll actually give you a reminder to save your project. I strongly encourage you to do so, you know, just in case you forgot to save. But anyway, now we can see our project.flb folder in our videos folder, and then we can double click on this, and then it'll open up our project. Now you may need to right click on it, then click open with other application, then view all applications, and then find flow blade in here by searching for it, and then click on that, then click select. Now depending on how many edits you made, it may take a while, so be patient. But anyway, once you're done with that, you can just click render right here, not here, here, and then select the folder that you want to render it to. And by the way, this exports your video in a format that other programs will recognize and use, including your media player and also YouTube if you want to put your videos there for public viewing. But anyway, we can just select the name of our output file, movie.mp4 works fine for the purposes of this video. And then you want to make sure that the encoding format is h264 slash mp4, and then the rest is fine. And then you can set your render profile to whatever resolution you want to render it to. By default, it leaves the project profile, which is great since it's HD 1080p 30fps, which is exactly what we want. And then before we render this, I want to mention a few tips that I forgot to mention. You can use the left and right arrow keys to move across individual frames, just to get your cuts down to the individual frame. And then these toggles control what clips the blade tool will cut. By default, it's like this. So if I just want to cut my main video, but I don't want to cut the secondary video, I can do that. Or if I want to cut both videos, I can set it to this. And by the way, you can toggle these on and off by clicking on them. Or if I just want to edit my secondary video, I can just toggle off V1. And of course you can add audio only clips right here on these audio tracks. But I mean, now that we've got all that out of the way, we can just click render and then we'll begin rendering your file. So now this will take a while, depending on how long your video is and what your hardware specs are. And to decrease the amount of time that it takes to render your video, I'd encourage you not to have any unnecessary processes running in the background. But anyway, I'll speed this up.
All right, and once your video is rendered, you can just close out of this. You may want to save this just in case. And then you can just do a test view of your video. Right, today we're taking a trip down. And if it looks good, you can send it off wherever you need to. Be it YouTube, a family member or friend, your boss, whoever, or whatever. And that was a starter guide on how to use the Flowblade video editor. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it was helpful, hit the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment.